through nail at a four tire stop they opted for four to keep the balance of the race car so far so good jack up jack down oh a little slow but he leaves alan jeff gordon's team will do four tires steve latart telling jeff they're ninth out of 15 let's get four adjust the car and take our chances jamie jack and Al told jimmy johnson if we take four this time we stand to lose three or four positions is it worth it is it worth it he asked his driver yes they're taking four tires the two tires stop did not help them early on so jimmy johnson down and away with four fresh ones race off of pit road newman becomes a leader up five spots at 15.8 second stop calls kyle bush and positions back in just a moment ESPN's coverage of NASCAR Nextel Cup Series on ABC. Brought to you by Napa Auto Care Centers. Napa, get the good stuff. And Toyota, moving forward. Folks, we are setting up here for a good old Texas-style shootout here. Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, being shown back in 10th position now. A moment ago, coming out of the pits, a near miss. Let's listen. See, they're getting four tires here. They're changing these lifts. They're getting ready to come down off the jack. except for those two cars there. Yeah, if he was going to the grass, the rest of them were going out into grass, that's for Aside sure. from so. Harvick and Burton, he was clear all the way to the grass. Again, uh, caution uh, coming out of lap 298, 12th, 12th, uh, a record time 12th caution here in Texas. Greg Biffle, by the way, treated and released at the infield care center after that uh, brief smoke inhalation inside the car. He's, a, he's okay. Now we're talking about some of the downforce on these cars and how the balance is so critical to be able to get laps very well here in this mile and a half track. Let's show you what we're talking about. Let's take a look at Jeff Burton's number 31 and Ryan Newman's number 12. They're both clean air, got downforce in the back. And watch this. Jeff Burton pulls up and as soon as he gets behind Ryan Newman, ooh, completely gone. Now he doesn't have much downforce in the back. And now Ryan Newman doesn't have anything back there. Kurt or Jeff Burton doesn't have anything in the front of his car. But if you get a little farther back, like you get the downforce back. So when you get that close, both, it really hurts both of you. It hurts the back of Newman, hurts the front of Jeff Burton. 30 laps to go. 12, 12 car took two tires. That did the 26 car of McMurray and the 17 of Kenseth. And folks, it has been a long time since uh, the 12 car Ryan Newman's gone to victory lane 78 races ago. New Hampshire, September of 2005. Over two years, how hungry is Ryan Newman to get that win? You got to think he's very hungry. We saw him at Lowe's Motor Speedway take the lead late in the race and then have a tire issue with the left rear spin out and lose the thing. And I'll tell you what, Ryan Newman, in this situation, he short run, lap, short runs to the checker. He's really, really good. Good to rest. Uh, he runs every lap like the qualifying lap. And like you said, Andy, like two laps to go at Charlotte. Had the left rear problem, almost had it won. Didn't happen. Can he hold on? He did not only took the lead at Charlotte, like he'd been shot out of a cannon when he went by at Charlotte. Here he goes, restart. It'll be 29 laps to go. As they take off into turn one, Newman trying to hold off Kins and McMurray Truex and Jimmy Johnson in fifth position. Boy, and Matt Kins has got a big run on the top of the racetrack and those fresh tires. And look at that. Pulls right alongside of Newman. Well, both of these guys have right sides only, but the 17 car has been the best car. And he's got that momentum, that top lane of the racetrack. It's the preferred line around here at Texas Motor Speedway. And Matt Kenseth uses that to his advantage and pulls away right now from Ryan Newman. He figured out a little trick on his restarts, how he could run wide open through one and two on that first lap. And he just kind of snuck up on these guys and caught them by surprise. Well, he's done it once now. Now he's got the confidence that he can do it again. And you're exactly right. And he did it again just now. And it paid off for him. 99 car of Edwards is the lap car, as is the nine car of Casey Kane. Kane back in 18th spot. Here's the one in 26, the Truex and uh, McMurray cars. They are battling for third position. Truex just takes it away. Yeah, this one car is the first car that has four tires. The 48 car also got four tires. So these guys are going to try to run these guys down with these two tires. It's going to be interesting to see if they can do it. Boy, Martin Truex is going to be feeling great right now, knowing the rest of the guys have got the two, and he's got four, Andy. I mean, that is a great feeling for a driver. But can he get past the traffic? And will the clean 
dirty air versus the clean air hurt him. We're going to see. Matt Kenseth just ran one of the fastest laps of his race, even on those just right side tires, 29 flat. That's a great lap. That's about three tenths faster than the guys behind him. Now he's a dirty air. That's the number one car Martin Truex is in right now. That's a bad thing, but when he's got four tires, that can make up some of the aerodynamic disadvantage that he's in right now. So he's got to take advantage of that and get it done now. Got 26 laps to do it, too, and I think if those four tires are going to help, it's going to take a little time to make it, to make this move. He's got 26 laps to do it. Plenty of time. Here's the five car, Kyle Busch. Remember, he was a leader, and that 15.8-second pit stop cost him a lot of positions. Now he is trying to reel them in. Busch is led by four the most laps today, 153 laps. So he's trying to get there, and as is the two car of Kurt Busch back in seventh position. Now make it sixth. Boy, you got to hand up to Jamie McMurray. He's done a great job this afternoon with Larry Carter as crew chief. They've played everything perfect right now. He's in the seventh position late in the race, 25 laps ago. He's positioned his car in a perfect time. Great job by Larry Carter. But the fastest car the last two laps has been this 48 car. You see him now moving underneath the one car. Man, this guy just gets it done. When it's time to go, he knows how to do it. Jimmy Johnson finished 38th here in April. A victim of an early incident has never won at this racetrack. In fact, Jimmy Johnson has not won at any of the final three tracks here at Phoenix or Homestead. Guys, this is unbelievable. He wins Martinsville. He wins Atlanta. And now he's running third, and he's mowing them down. Two-tenths of a second faster this last time by. The last three laps, he's the fastest car on the racetrack. Look at how he closed on Newman like Newman was just sitting still. Now where do you go? But, Jerry, you just go around him because when you got that fresh tires and that car is that quick, you can almost put that car wherever you want right now. He's not going to stick behind him, that's for sure. He's going to go to the bottom or he's going to go to the top because he doesn't have time to waste right now. Laps are winding down. Folks, we're going to take one final break and come back and carry it to the checkered flag. Can Kenseth hang on? Will Newman or Johnson get there? We'll find out in a moment. Welcome back to Fort Worth, Texas. Texas Motor Speedway. And we are setting up for a Texas-style shootout here in the final 18 laps. 17 car Matt Kenseth is the leader but folks Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car is a man on a mission can you believe this the 48 car week after a week of Jimmy Johnson running down Matt Kenseth right now with 17 laps to go and Andy look at the speeds what are the I mean it's mile and a half an hour faster than Kenseth at the moment he's been consistently outrunning Matt Kenseth two tenths to a you know tenth and a half a lap looks like it's just a matter of time before he runs it down here and what did he just say? Go get us some cowboy hats? Yeah, that's what you get for, you, for winning here. You go to Victor Lane and put on the cowboy hat. You get to go down and visit with Eddie Gossage and have all the cowboy hats on. They put a holster on you. It's a Texas race. Not folks. only that, it's the biggest purse of any of these chase races the, that these guys are going for. Yeah, that's all I'd say right now because the fat lady hasn't sung yet, man. You don't get too confident. And he is a chase contender. Don't do anything crazy. You don't want to get loose underneath. Matt Kent is trying to take the lead. And it looks like he's going to go to the bottom and try to get it done. Can't say it enough. It was here a year ago that Jimmy Johnson finally took the lead in the chase standings for the first time in 2006. And he never looked back. He held on at Phoenix and Homestead to become the 2006 NASCAR Nextel Cup champion. He came into the day nine points behind his teammate, Jeff Gordon. And right now, he is 15 points ahead of Gordon in the standings. It looks like Matt Kenseth learned something when he was racing that 11 car because he was, you know, working the top of that racetrack seemed to be an advantage for him. But, uh, you know, it's interesting to see how he'll do that with this 48 car. But the 24 car is moving up, too. He took four tires, and he started to pass some cars. Started 10th on the restart. Now he's seven. Yeah, Jeff Gordon up on the wheel. Remember what happened last week in Atlanta? Gordon started picking him off here and late in the race. So don't give up on Jeff Gordon yet. Up in seventh in the points and just a 15-point separation. Now, here's what I'm seeing, though, guys. Matt Kenseth leading the race, and Jimmy Johnson's caught him. He's in the dirty air, and Andy's losing speed now. He's almost a tenth of a half second slower than Matt these last two you laps. Outside. If you look side, you're telling me. Don't run him outside of me, Bob. 
And Kintz is driving aggressive, and he's driving defensively also. He's taking his line away, and Jimmy just can't catch him now. What Matt's saying, you know, I think Matt wants to run the bottom to run fast laps, but he doesn't want that 48 on the outside of him. He said, don't, Bob, don't let him on the outside of me. Well, right now, you saw the 48 just come off a of turn two and really kick the back of the car out. He got loose that time. And look at the 17 pulling away in the center of the corner. So the dirty air is really playing a big effect on Jimmy Johnson right now. Yeah, because Jimmy ran him down two tenths, a good solid two tenths a lap, all the way till he, till he got to the bumper. Now he's not even as fast as Matt Kent. In fact, this last time by, the leader, Matt Kent, with a 30.66 to Jimmy Johnson's 30.80. So definitely slower. And Jimmy's going to have to get something done quick now because this he's going to tear his tires off this car trying to get around him. You see the car wiggling around now, exiting the corners. I really think Matt Kenseth learned something while he was racing Denny Hamlin in that 11 car. That's going to pay off for him right here. Boy, catching a guy's one thing, passing him is another. And aerodynamics is crazy, man. It just really affects these cars big time. Okay, you got 10 laps to go, Rusty, and you're sitting here in Jimmy Johnson's spot. What are you doing? What are you going to try to do to get by him? Right now, I'm going to the top of the racetrack. I'm going to try to build the momentum, Andy. As soon as, oh, Kansas gets loose. 10 laps to go this time, by. You can tell they're both trying to drive like it's a qualifying lap. If I was Jimmy Johnson, I'd go to the top, I'd get this bumper, have the momentum, and try to dive underneath them, try to drag race them down the front straightaway and use that momentum exiting the corners as an advantage. Okay, you know, we talked about it early, maybe even in the pre-race show, Rusty. I think I heard you say, are these guys going to be racing each other or are they going to be racing for wins? What do you think Jimmy Johnson's doing right now? Well, I think he's racing for a win right now. He definitely knows where Jeff Gordon is, but he's not racing Jeff Gordon right now. He's racing Matt Kenseth, and he's doing a smart job. Ten laps to go. Matt Kenseth, 2003 Cup champion, trying to hold off the reigning Cup champion. And margin coming down just a slight amount there. Will traffic be a factor? They're going to move in on some uh, other cars here in the next three to four laps. Remember, Jeff Burton passed Matt Kenseth right at the, uh, on the last lap of the race in the spring. And I know Matt le probably learned something from that, too. Yeah, he let Burton get on the inside, and I know Matt's probably driving as much. How much do you drive with your mirror, and how much do you drive with the windshield here now in his final lap? Well, you drive a lot with your mirror uh, and a lot with your windshield. And right now, they're coming up by Casey Mears, a teammate of Jimmy Johnson. What's going to happen here, guys? Let's take a look at this. Let's see if this is going to be a factor. Looks like Casey's moving out of the way, letting him have a clean race and not, not getting in the way. I thought something might happen there. Top of your screen in the chase. He's in Kenseth is 424 points back. Folks, he could win this race and be out of the chase because you got to be 390 or less when this race is over to be still in mathematical contention for the chase championship. Got two tires on the 17 on the last pit stop. Four tires on the 48. And that is unreal. The 48's got better tires. But the 17's got the clean air, got the lead. And boy, we've had some controversy this Man, year. This run. Here he comes. Here comes Jimmy Johnson on the bottom of the racetrack. Can he hang there? Oh, 17 Kins have pulls him on the straightaway. Johnson's got seven more laps to try it again. Here he comes out on the bottom of the track again. Looks like he was just saving something for this last charge, and he's got something on him. Can he hang on? Can he grip the track? He's got the fresh tires. Kenza does it. Kenza, oh, a little nudge there on the right rear. But Kansas just cannot give up right now. And Jimmy's committed to the bottom. He's going for it. If they get side by side too much, they could get real loose. They clear Montoya. Jimmy Johnson cannot afford contact. He is right now the still points leader. Still there. What a dogfight this is. I think this is really smart for Jimmy Johnson. He just laid back there just a little bit. Cooled his jets a little, cooled his tires, made this run. He can just get going. Oh, Whoa, hanging hey. on. Six laps to go. 190,000 fans on their feet at Texas Motor Speedway. This is two of the best in the business going at it right here. And right now, Kansas doesn't want to give up. He can smell victory at Texas Motor Speedway. The largest attendance, the largest purse besides the Brickyard 400 and the Daytona 500. A big purse. It is Mano Mano here, one on one. Two former Cup champions going at it. The 17 car of Matt Kenza, the 48 of Jimmy Jones. Johnson. And here a moment ago was the contact. Watch the right rear wall. Watch the 17 car get out of shape. Well, there was almost contact there, Jerry. He got big time out of shape and stayed in the throttle, kept momentum. And look at him outrunning Jimmy down the front straightaway. Guys, this thing isn't over. It looks like Jimmy's cooling his tires again and take another stab at Is him. Is that here. something you'll do even this late in the race? Can you have that much discipline to say, okay, I'm going to sit here and cool these tires for a lap or so? Hey guys, you know what? I never had that much discipline. I just couldn't do it. If I was right there, I kept digging. 
The Jimmy.